Now in this video, we're going to talk about a process in which you can pasteurize your meads without getting that layer of sediment or honey solids at the end result in your wine bottle. Hi, I'm Charles and welcome to DIY Fermentation, your site for doing fermentation on a shoestring budget. Now, as many of you who have watched this channel before may have realized that, no, I don't use sulfites in my wine mead making operations. Try and keep it as natural as possible. Now, in order to make sure that I can stabilize the wine, I use pasteurization. Works very well with wines and it also works with meads up to a point. The problem with meads is that after everything is cooled down, you eventually end up with about a close to a half inch layer of sediment at the bottom of your wine bottle. Now, it's, it's just honey solids. It's not harmful. It's just a bit unsightly. Now, for pasteurization, if you can boil water and you can read a thermometer, you can pasteurize your, your wines and meats. So we're going to look at a way in which I've pretty much discovered how you can get rid of all of these solids in your wine bottle so that you can have a nice, clear glass of wine when you're ready or a glass of mead when you're ready to enjoy it. Let's see how that works. If need be, go ahead and back sweeten your mead to your desired level of sweetness. Now after back sweetening, our mead has gotten quite hazy. Now that would be fine, except that it's more than likely going to restart fermentation. That's why we're going through the pasteurization process. Now with our pot on the stove, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put in a ceramic or temperature safe plate at the bottom of the pot because I don't want the carboy, because we're going to put the whole carboy in, touching the bottom of the, of the pot. Whatever you use, make sure that it's safe enough to handle the temperature. Put our carboy in there. I'm going to take off our top. And we're going to take a piece of aluminum foil, just double it over and make a temporary cap on top. Just push it in a bit, make a little dimple. We've already sanitized our thermometer and we're just going to drop that in the middle, making sure that it's immersed in our mead. And next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and Pour in enough water <laughs> so that it does not <laughs> mess up our label. So if you have any labels left on your cardboard, make sure you take those off as well before putting in the water. And just go ahead and start pouring in water. And the water is just anywhere from cool to tepid. I mean, it does not have to be hot. And you got to remember, water is going to expand, so you don't want to bring it all the way up to the top either. So with that in place and the water in place, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and turn on our stove. Anywhere from medium to medium high ought to do it. And we want to go ahead and let it come up to temperature until our thermometer reads 165 at which point we are going to remove our mead from the stove quickly. Now that our thermometer has come up to our temperature of 165, we want to go ahead and carefully, making sure you do not burn yourself, remove our mead from the pot and let's just go ahead and turn off the stove. At this point, all we want to do is let it come down to room temperature. See if the experiment worked. Now I've allowed this to sit overnight and a lot of the solids have already begun to settle out. In fact, we're looking at really less than an inch, more like three quarters of an inch of sediment remains. Now there are particles still in suspension 
And I'm going to give this another day or two to let most of that settle out. But then I'm just going to go ahead and rack them into bottles because the experiment has proven that you can let most of this particle settle out in the carboy as opposed to letting them settle out in the bottle. Now, if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify buttons. And also check out some of the more up and coming Mead Maker channels a number of which you can find in the description section of this video. Until the next video, I'll see you then.